What's up, people? Good day to you wherever you are. So I wanted to get back to my to my funny stories when I was in the organization uh, videos. So this this is one that happened um, two times when I sat with someone who was this fellowship. Um, one time at a meeting, and I mean when I say sat with, I mean talk to them, socialize with them, laugh with them, the whole thing. Once was at a meeting, the other, the other time was at a convention. The first time I didn't know that he was this fellowship. So it was my, my homeboy, Benjamin. So he went to a different congregation, same city, same side of town. We had in, in our little area of town, I think we had four kingdom halls and like nine congregations because there was a Spanish congregation there in our little part of the city. Um, so he went to one of those other congregations. My service meeting was on Tuesday, just like his was. Um, so we had this thing that we did in another city close to us took us about an hour 45 minutes two hours to get to they used to have this thing once a month on wednesdays where they would have like a witness bowling like they would rent out this bowling alley once a month um and so we and it was on wednesday so we would do this thing where we would say okay we're going to go to the meeting first then we're going to go drive overnight and we had a friend there in that city we would stay with there was a, a, another uh witness guy so I told him, like, I live right by the expressway, or my king mom was right by the expressway where we get on and, and head straight to the city. So I told him, just come to my meeting with me because he wanted to ride down with me. I said, just come to my meeting with me uh, on Tuesday. As soon as the meeting's over, we'll have our clothes in the car. We'll just get right on the on the freeway and just drive down. So he's like, cool. So everything goes like normal. He comes over my house. Um, we ride to the kingdom hall, get there early. We're doing the normal socializing with people, laughing with people. Um, sit through the meeting, you know, everything. I'm sitting there talking to him the whole time. The meeting's over. We're sitting there talking to people, socializing with people. And then we get in the car and start driving um, down to, to the other city. My pages started blowing up. This was back in the day. Cell phones were like starting to be around um, beyond like the big giant, you know, car ones. This was like normal portable cell phones were starting to be around, but everyone didn't have them yet. You know, it was just now starting to get into that phase. Um, this was like, this was like even before, slightly before, like when people, everybody started having cell phones, but you had to pay minutes like before 9 p.m. or whatever. This was even before that. So I still had a pager. Most people still had a pager. So people would call the pager, put in their number, put in 911. You could program certain people's numbers in. So my, my cell, my, my pager started blowing up with all these messages, phone numbers and 911. And I recognized some of the numbers, some of them I didn't even recognize probably like 10, 11 different times my, my uh, page is blowing up. Some people page me again multiple times. And I'm, I'm me me and uh, Benjamin riding. I'm like, man, what is going on? I hope everything's okay, like with my family and, you know, with every, I don't know what's going on, man, but I didn't want to pull over and try to find a phone. So we just, uh, I said, as soon as we get to, you know, where we're going, I got to figure out what's going on. I don't, I don't know why my page is blowing up. So finally I get there. Some of them, it was too late at that time to call back. It was like close to midnight at that point. Um, but some of the people I knew I could call because then, you know, they'd answer the phone or whatever. I called back and I'm like, you, you, what's going on? Why are you blowing up my pager? And they're like, man, look, your boy Benjamin's just fellowship and you just was chilling with him at the meeting. I'm like, nah, I ain't just fellowship. I'm sitting here right here. Just roll with me, you know, down here and we over at so-and-so's house. We about to go to the bowling thing tomorrow. He ain't just fellowship. They're like, I'm telling you at his meeting tonight, he got this fellowship. He just wasn't there because he was at, you know, our our kingdom home. And I'm like, man, you you lying. I'm I call him in like, hey, hey Ben, come here, man. He come in. I'm like, yo, they telling me that you, you just fellowship, man. What's going on? Tell me you ain't just fellowship. And he just looked at me like he just kind of looked down at the ground. I was like, man, they told me they were gonna do it next week. And I said, do what? And he said they was they told me they was gonna disfellowship me, but they said it was gonna be next week. I have my uh, judicial committee um, like yesterday, so they told me it was gonna be next week. So I thought I was gonna get one more time to kick it with you and all the fellas, and one more time at the bowling party to talk to everybody. And I wasn't gonna say nothing because they told me they was gonna do it next week, not this week, because I just had my judicial hearing yesterday. So I was furious because I'm like, yo, man, you let me sit there. With you at a meeting, socialize with you. We singing songs. I'm joking with you. We talking to people after the meeting, knowing that you was just fellowship. And as I, he said, well, I wasn't technically yet because I thought they was gonna announce it to the meeting, you know, next week. 
You know what I mean? I was furious. And then we was in a in a uh, difficult situation because the dude we went to stay with, um, to stay the night with, like he was my friend. I knew him. He didn't really know Benjamin that well. So now I'm like, man, now I done brought this fellowship person to your house. You know what I mean? And now we got to figure out what we're going to do. So we had to go get him. I made Ben tell him what had happened. Dude was like, well, I'm not going to make you find somewhere to go at, you know, 12 o'clock at night, but you, you got to leave in the morning. Like you can't be here socializing with me. Um, so he let him stay the night. I had to get up early, go find Benjamin, like a hotel to stay in for the night, um, figure out how he was going to get home. He could, obviously he couldn't go to the bowling thing. We was down there to go to, uh, it was just a whole mess, man. But I was mad at him for a long time. Like, how are you going to tell me, I mean, not tell me that you're this fellowship, man, or that you are about to be this fellowship even you know i understand the brothers told him it was going to be the following week but so what you still are are basically this fellowship tell me so i know how to deal with the situation uh but that was crazy man i i, I talked to him quite often like on social media and stuff and uh, he lives on another part of the country now he's not a witness to anything now but um just you know another crazy funny story um the second time is i did it on purpose so this was kind of when I was on my way out, heading out of the organization. I kind of had started to do a lot of research, started to realize a lot of things. Um, but I was still going, you know, I was still going to the meetings. I was still going to the convention. So there was a girl named Emily, super cool girl. She lived in another city too. But when we would go visit witnesses there, she would let us stay. Her family, she didn't really know her father too well. He wasn't like in and out of her life. He wasn't a witness, but her mother was. Um, but she had lost her mother when she was uh, probably like 14, 15 years old, moved in with her grandmother. Her grandmother was a witness um, and and uh, she had lost her grand. She ended up losing her grandmother, too, when she was like 18 years old or something. I think she was maybe a year older than me. Um, so she had her own apartment. You know, we would go over there. Super cool girl. I didn't see her ever doing nothing. I guess technically she shouldn't have been letting us come spend the night and all that. But as far as like you know, having sex with people and getting drunk. And you know, I didn't see her ever do nothing like that. She was a super cool girl. She used to just open up her house to us. She'd be like, yeah, y'all can come stay. Sometimes with no notice. I would just call like, hey, Emily, I I'm in town. What's up? Can I come Can I come steal the couch? You know what I mean? She would just be like, yeah, I don't care. Come. We would go over. She would make us big breakfast in the morning. We would even tell her like, yeah, we can go get McDonald's. You ain't got to cook. She's like, no, I enjoy this. You know, she was just a super, super good person. So I hadn't seen her in a while. I hadn't been to that city in a while. It had been probably six months to a year. Um, and I was at a convention. So somebody had told me like a week before, like, hey, you know, Emily got this fellowship. Um, you know, and, and, and that hurt me because I'm like, man, she's such a she's such a good person. I really like her, uh, Emily. Um, but he's like, yeah, she got this fellowship, man. I don't know what she did, but they announced it that she's this fellowship now. But. As you know, with people who are this fellowship, they, they tell them if you really want to come back quickly, make sure you're at every meeting, make sure you go to the conventions, assemblies, you go to everything. So we go to the convention. It wasn't even, it was our convention. I don't think it was her, her correct convention. I don't remember how it was because I don't think they went to the same convention. Maybe they did. But anyway, she's at the convention. I saw her late Saturday as we were leaving. Um, I didn't see her during the day at all Saturday, but I saw her, like I said, she had lost her mother, lost her grandmother, and now she's disfellowshipped, so she can't like even socialize with her friends. So well, as we were getting up to leave after the last song and all that, you know, walking down the steps, I saw her like sitting over on the other side a little bit, uh, kind of catty corner to me, saw her there by herself, saw her gather her stuff up all by herself, walk down the steps. Um, I was going to try to catch up with her then, but it was just so many people funneling out different you know exits i couldn't get to her um i don't know what i was gonna say but i was like i'm gonna get to her you know and tell, tell her something um so i didn't catch up and try to see where she went i didn't catch up to her um coming out of the convention center that day um uh, but the next day sunday i was like man i'm gonna go find emily first thing i don't know if, about y'all but when we went to conventions people seem to like sit in the same area you know if you found a spot that you liked in the convention center or in the arena wherever you were at you you we would normally go say, okay, we're going to sit right back where we was yesterday. We're going to find a good spot, sit right back there yesterday. So first thing I did is walk to that area she was sitting in because I know a lot of people were like that. Um, and I got there a little early. And then she comes walking up, you know, all by herself again, has all of her books and everything with her and just sits down in the same seat. She was trying to sit like near a corner so that at least 
and put her bag in the seat beside her so that at least at least if somebody sat beside her maybe it'd only be on one side she wouldn't have to socialize i could see what she was doing um but i felt terrible um and so i saw her and i just walked up to her she was sitting down like she didn't want to look up and be socializing with people so she was just sitting down reading the program you know what i mean um to see what what was going to be on the program that day um and i just came up and sat down moved her bag put it down on the floor and sat down right beside her and i was like what's up and she just looked at me her eyes got big and she's like you can't you can't be here you can't talk to me and i was like yes i can what you mean i'm talking to you i'm sitting here i'm talking to you and she like was holding up like i guess trying not to make it obvious she was talking to me so she's holding up her program like talking under her breath like no i got this fellowship you can't be here i can't talk to you and i'm like nah you talking to me i don't care you, you talking to me she's like you gonna get us both in trouble I said, you're already disfellowship. So what are you going to do now? Disfellowship you more? Like, even if they tell you, like, you're starting your time back over with to get reinstated. It just started, like, a couple weeks ago. You know what I mean? It's not going to harm you. I'm sitting here. I'm talking to you. I ain't letting you sit here by yourself. And um, she's like, no, you know, go, go. She started laughing a little bit. She's like, you got, you're crazy. You got to go. And I was like, no, nah, I'm sitting here, man. I don't care. You don't got to talk to me if you don't want to. But I'm sitting right here beside you. And, you know, this all day. You know what I mean? And then this was like right after it was a year or maybe two years after they had stopped giving away the, the food at the convention where you kind of just had to they, they encourage people to pack their lunch but where we were going there was a giant food court where everybody would just go fill up and buy food you know burger kings borrows pizza and uh they had all kinds of different food places in the food court attached to um the arena that we were in so we would go there and um you just fellowship people that makes it kind of awkward for them you know where they're going to go eat lunch you know so she had this little lunch pack I guess she was just gonna try to sit right there in her seat. I said, "Nah, come on, I'm buying you lunch too, and we're gonna we're gonna bring our lunch back here and we're gonna eat." And she's like, "You are crazy, you know." She said, "You <laughs> you are gonna be in so much trouble for this." I said, "Look, man, I'm probably on my way out anyway. At this point, I really don't care. Um, what they can do to me doesn't mean that much. I ain't about to let you sit here all day by yourself. So it is what it is. Even my my boys were telling me like, yo." Like when I would go to the bathroom and suddenly they would come up like, what are you doing, man? She's just fellowship, you know? And I wasn't, I'd never tried to talk to Emily before then, after then, never tried to be with her, nothing like that. It wasn't about that at all. She just was super cool. She was just one of those people that was like, man, they, all they do is good for other people. You know what I mean? And, and in that moment, I wasn't going to let her just sit there by herself at that convention, um, you know, and, and, uh, and be lonely. I just wasn't going to do it. If I got in trouble, I got in trouble, you know, whatever. So what? Um, and so we sat there all day and I talked to her several times. She was trying not to, not to talk a lot. You know what I mean? I guess she still was very conscious about looking around. She's looking around to see if anybody that she knew or I knew was looking, uh, people that, uh, people that I did know was looking, but they didn't really, not everyone knew her since she was from a different city. So they didn't really put two and two together. Some people that did know her was looking a little crazy, you know, but we didn't really see a lot of people that we knew, honestly. Um, but it was just one of those things where I was like, man, I don't believe in this stuff anyway. I'm about to go and I'm about to do what's right. You know, forget the doctrine, forget the rules. I'm about to sit with you today, Emily. You're just going to have to deal with it. You can get up and run away if you want. But besides that, we sitting together. You know what I mean? So we sat together. You know, that was the last, that was Sunday, the last day of the convention. Um, and I made sure I said, you still got my number, right? She said, yeah. I said, man, you know, I'm leaving. This is like probably my last convention. I'm about to be out of here. I'm about to just fade away. So you call me, you make sure that we stay in touch, man. You good people. And, uh, you know, whatever you need, let me know. Cause I knew she didn't have no family or nothing. Um, really inside or outside the organization. She didn't really have much family. Um, and we stayed in touch, you know, she was a cool person. She ended up years down the line getting married. Um, I don't think, I think she went back to the organization for a while, but I don't, I don't think she's in it now. I think she ended up leaving, um, her and her husband, but good, good person. You know what I mean? And I, I don't like to see good people in distress and in pain. Um, so just, you know, a little little funny story. A couple of times I, I sat with some disfellowship people. Um, on a side note, as I'm looking out the window here, I don't know if y'all are dealing with cicadas where you live, but I really, really, really hate cicadas. There's like millions of them all over the buildings, bouncing off the windows when you drive, flying onto your shirt, flying on your head, buzzing, ticking, 
all over the, the bushes, all over my grass. When I cut my grass, I have a big yard, cut my grass yesterday. They flying and bouncing off my face. I hate cicadas. I don't know if you're dealing with them where you live, but if you are, I, I have compassion for you because I hate these things. But y'all have a good day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comment, leave your message. I always leave my email uh, address in the, in the description. So I'm always willing to talk to anybody who wants to talk. Um, you know, reach out to me. Y'all have a good day.